Hi everyone, welcome to the Culinary Institute of America. My name is Robert Tremblay. I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at the college. I am also a 2010 graduate, and today we're going to be working with avocados. More specifically, we're going to be actually be making guacamole, which I know from the outset doesn't seem like a very technically involved dish in that sense, but what it involves mostly is an understanding of flavor profiles and how to balance out ingredients. One of the most important things that we learn in the early stages of the program here at the college is really that working with ingredients, not only understanding the science and procedure that goes into working with food, but understanding our ingredients, understanding product knowledge, and more importantly, how those flavors go together. So to begin with, what I wanna do is kind of talk to you about avocados in general. Um, what I've got here is a really well-ripened avocado that you see. It's got a nice dark outside rind to it. And on the inside, you want your flesh to be um, tender to the touch, but not mushy. It's a very important thing if you're shopping for avocados in a grocery store. You'll usually see a lot of variations of color and sizes with black Haas avocados, but what you really want to focus on is their texture and their hold once you pick them up and actually go to feel them. So you, what you're going to test them for is really a little bit of give. You want it to be tender. You want it to have some give to your touch, but you don't want it to mush in. So you're going to test out soft spots on the avocado itself and you really want a nice firm avocado. Um, if you're going to be making your dish a couple days later, if you're going to let them sit for a while, um, you want to get them a little bit more on the green and firm side because unlike normal fruits, these actually ripen off the vine. So similar to a, uh, a banana, which you can buy green and then let them sit on your, your, your kitchen counter for a couple days, let them get yellow and ripen. Same thing happens with an avocado. So some things that I do if I know I'm going to be making a, a dish that utilizes avocado over the weekend and I go shopping on Thursday, then I'm definitely going to look for a greener avocado at that point to give it time to ripen. So that way it's at the right um, the right done this when you're ready to start working with it. So um, these are just perfect. They should be great for the guacamole that we're gonna be making today. One unique note about this, as I mentioned, these are actually a fruit. Um, I know they're a savory application and at CIA, we actually divide ingredients based upon that application. If they're savory, we, we treat them as a vegetable more so than a fruit. If they're on the sweeter side, then we tend to treat them more as a fruit from that perspective. So not necessarily following their, their kind of botanical origins, but when we're talking about avocados, they're actually more closely related to a berry than they are to a vegetable. Um, inside the, the green meaty flesh is a, is a pit, like any kind of stone fruit that you might come in contact with. Um, so it's a very unique element in that regard. But in terms of its applications, most typically going to be used in a, in a savory element. But um, for our guacamole today, I just want to take you through the ingredients that we're going to be utilizing for our guacamole today. As I touched on in the beginning, it's really about focusing on our ingredients, understanding how to balance out flavor profiles and work with ingredients that may not seem like they go together initially, but they really work in a balancing act for our flavor profiles and working over the palate. So um, first and foremost, I want to start off with our citrus here. Um, we have both the traditional limes that you see here, but we also are going to use some fresh orange juice, which I know seems a little bit strange, not a typical thing that you mostly find in guacamoles. However, this is a trick that I learned only a couple months ago from a close chef friend of mine, and it's really revolutionized my guacamole and it takes it to a different level. Uh, we talk about the harshness of the acidity within limes, balances out really well with the fattiness of the avocados that we're going to be utilizing, but then using the the sweetness of the orange really helps balance that out, gives a nice round edge to your ingredients and really helps blend everything together. In addition, we have some aromatics that we're going to be using. So I've got some finely minced shallot here, which is pretty identical to a red onion. Um, I did have a chef when I was going through the program, one of my first chefs at the college that actually referred to shallots as a pretentious onion. So uh, just a little, you know, higher side of the, the onion family with regard to that, but you can definitely use red onion in its place, um, but it's gonna give a nice spiciness and some nice aromatics to our guacamole, give it some real freshness as well. 
And so next we have some finely minced jalapeno as well. Um, really gonna add some nice spice to our guacamole. Now this is definitely an optional ingredient. However, most typical recipes for guacamole will include some spice. Uh, myself personally, I really love the incorporation of spices to this. Really brings a lot of vibrance to it and uh, you know, get that nice sting on the on the palate as well. Um, I did take out the seeds and the internal membrane from the jalapenos themselves, which is really where the heat in a, in a pepper is going to reside. So omitting those will add some of that nice smoky spiciness that's traditional within a jalapeno itself, um, but not having that full intensity. So depending on who your audience is and your personal preferences, you can uh, choose to add as much spice to it as you want or, or as little. So really depends on, on who you're making it for and what you're taste profile is. Um, in addition, we have some small diced cherry tomatoes as well. Um, this is gonna add a little bit of difference in texture to the rest of the ingredients. We have some crunch with our jalapeno and our finely minced shallot, but we also wanna have some difference in, in size and texture with the tomato. So it's gonna provide some nice balanced acidity as well to, to go along with the avocado and really just bring a nice freshness to our dish as well. And then finally, we have some cilantro, which we're going to wait till the very end to, to dice up a little bit. We wanna do just a rough chop on it and it'll bring some nice floral elements to the dish and some, some nice freshness as well. So we talk about using fresh ingredients. Mise en place is a really important part of this so that we have all of our ingredients prepped out ahead of time so that it comes together nicely. We don't have one ingredient sitting out for a while while another is resting on the side. Um, it's just a really important element to the success of building a dish is to have everything meased out ahead of time and have everything in its place. So next we're ready to prep our avocados. Um, and it's, if you're not familiar with how to go about cutting into an avocado, it can be a little bit of an intimidating uh, thing to go into. So I'll just talk you through real quickly how to prep your avocado. Um, you're gonna take it from the top and you're just going to slide your knife directly into the flesh of the avocado and you're gonna slide down until you feel the pit against the knife. Um, and then what you're gonna do very simply is just rotate your knife around the avocado. Just continue to follow that pit until you get to the other side. And then you're gonna have a perfect slice of your avocado. So you have your two halves. You can see when I was talking about the ripeness with regard to your avocado, having that nice tender outside is usually gonna result in a nice bright green inside, which is exactly what you're looking for. We know that it's not gonna be overly fibrous or you know have any resistance when we go to, go to work with it later on. It's gonna have a nice real tender quality to it when we work with it into our guacamole. So we're going to remove our pit. Now this again, you really need to commit to doing it. You're gonna use the front tip of your knife and you're gonna go in and just plunge it into the pit itself and then extract the pit directly. Should come out really easily. Again, the, the ripeness of your avocado is gonna have a really big impact on the uh, ease with which you can remove the pit for it. If it's, if it's under ripened, it's gonna stick in there and you're not gonna have a, a real easy time of getting it out. So a lot of different reasons why it's important to make sure that your avocados are at that right ripeness. So we're going to quickly do the next one as well. Like I said before, we're gonna go in right from the top here rotate our knife around, just following that pit, let that be our guide. Get to the other side, we open it up, and we've got our, our avocado. You can see there are some dark, dark spots in here, but it's still a really nice avocado. It'll, it won't have any adverse effects on the flavor or anything like that. If it was any more ripened than this and it was starting to, to get a lot more brown spots in different places, then it'd be something you might want to avoid. But in this consistency, in this state, it's perfectly good to use. So we're just gonna go ahead and take out the pit again. Now we're gonna do my favorite part about prepping the avocado and it's really one of the most satisfying experience you can have. Um, a lot of people will scoop out their avocados first and then mash it up in the bowl all together. Um, personally, I like to pre-slice the avocado, cut it into small cubes while it's still in the, um, the rind itself. It just, to my preference, it keeps your board a lot cleaner and uh, just, you know, a way I like to work with the avocado. So to, to do that, we're just gonna slice through like I said, it's incredibly satisfying. So it serves multiple purposes. We're, we're getting our avocado prepped and, and we're relaxing at the same time. So we're just gonna slice through and then 
back across, kind of like making a checkerboard element. Just like that. And so what this is also going to give us by having it cut into these small dices is it's going to limit the amount of mashing that we're going to have to do once we get it into the bowl. Um, personally, in terms of making guacamole, I like there to be some contrast of texture with regard to the uh, avocado mashing. You don't want it to necessarily be just pulverized in there. You don't want to make a puree. You want there to be some structure to it so that you know you're eating avocado. It has a nice contrast, contrast of texture, as I mentioned. Um, but it also just you know really has a nice mouthfeel to it so especially when we're working with a raw ingredient um, and eating it in this manner you really want to focus on that mouthfeel portion of everything comes down to you know even with the knife cuts that you're going to be putting into it with regard to our shallots and our jalapeno and our tomatoes all of those knife cuts are going to have an impact on the eatability of your product just because of the raw state of it and the size of all of that very important to focus on those knife cuts all right, so we've got our avocados all cubed up and we're going to just scoop them out with a spoon. Real simple. This is also a very therapeutic part of the process. Very satisfying. Scoop out a perfectly ripened avocado. So we're doing a recipe for two avocados, obviously. So with regard to your measurements and things, um, I really like to, you know, prep more of my aromatics and other ingredients than I'm necessarily going to need, just due to the simple fact that we want to be able to taste as we go along and make sure that we get our flavors right. There's never going to be a perfect recipe that's going to co correlate with every single avocado because every type of vegetable and ingredient is going to be different, especially when they're in their fresh state. So the only way to accurately put together a recipe for something like this is to continuously taste and, and go through experience. So the more you work with these ingredients and understand how uh, other flavors balance off one another, that's how you're going to really maximize the quality of, of things like guacamole and things of that nature. So if you want to come in and take a look at the avocado avocado that we have in the bowl thus far. You can see it's still pretty whole, but by having those dices, like I said before, it's going to make the mashing process just a little bit easier. Now, I know I'm using a very technical tool here called a fork, but um, you know, there's obviously traditional methods to, to, to mashing up avocados and things of that nature, but um, the kitchens that I came up in coming out of the school and, and going into the industry, um, a simple uh, kitchen fork or dining room fork would work just the same. So we're not going to do a whole bunch of mashing ahead of time because as we work in our other ingredients, that's going to continue to break those up as well. So first thing we're going to do is add some salt and pepper because with the fat content of the avocado, it's very high in, in fat and cholesterol. However, it's good cholesterol um, in that sense is a very healthy ingredient to work with. Um, you want to take salt because it's going to, to really work well with it and balance everything out. So we're going to add some pepper as well. And now we're going to toss in our tomatoes. We'll leave a little bit for the end. Some of our jalapeno as well. And we'll do all of it, like I said. You can never add too much jalapeno if you ask me. So we're gonna toss in our shallots as well. Okay, just going to mix that around. And you can see as we're starting to mix in our salt and our other aromatics and ingredients, it's starting to break down the avocado itself and it's going to naturally become mashed up a bit so you're going to end up with bits that are you know somewhat whole so you have that nice consistency and then you also have the nice mashed uh, avocado as well more traditional to what you find in the grocery store personally i can't stand grocery store guacamole especially having um, learned to make it myself through the industry and you know through the tricks that i've learned from friends by incorporating the orange and everything but we've also we've got some great floral elements coming out of it we get to control our seasoning and everything that's going into it. We're gonna go ahead and start to add our citrus. So we're gonna start off with the lime. I'm just gonna roll it out, get the juices flowing a little bit. 
We're gonna start off with one, probably one whole lime will be good enough for the two avocados. But like I said, you know, some avocados are a little bit blander than others. They need a little bit more acidity to bring them more to life. So as we're gonna go along, we're gonna to continue to adjust uh, with, with each step in the process. So I'm gonna cut our lime in half and just using the fork that we were using to, to mix everything up, we're gonna go ahead and just squeeze that on top. Now the acidity, like I said before, this is all a balancing act with our ingredients. You wanna really think of, when you're making guacamole, think to make in a vinaigrette, which is essentially the same thing. You're putting aromatics into it, you're putting certain ingredients that are gonna liven up the flavors, but it's really a balancing act of acid and fat. And vinaigrettes, you're using a vinegar usually in most instances, or and you're using some type of oil. You know, sometimes vegetable oil or uh, extra virgin olive oil, what have it, or what have you. This is the same balancing act that we're doing here, except we're using our fat is going to be the avocado itself, and our acid's going to be fresh citrus. So that's what you want to kind of have in your mind as you're working through this type of ingredient is, how do I want to balance this out? What do I want to be my key notes as I'm working forward? And always keep that in mind as you're continuing to add ingredients because you want to consistently taste and you want to continue to make sure that you're monitoring your seasoning and that balance of the acidity. So we've got our lime in here and I'm not going to taste it yet. I want to first add some of our orange and then we're going to see where we're at, see if we want to add more orange juice to it, more lime juice. It's really about working on that back and forth give and take with regard to your citrus. So you don't need to add too much orange to this, just a little bit, maybe about a half an ounce or so because a little bit will go a long way. And then we have this fresh fruit that we're gonna snack on later on. We call that a shift snack, so it's always a good thing. And so we're gonna work in our orange with our lime. Come in and take a look. You can see how that acid is starting to break down the avocado. You still have those nice chunks in there that are you know, gonna eat like a piece of uh, well-ripened avocado, but then you also have the nice mashed pieces as well. So really getting a nice balance of, of textures as well as flavors. So I'm gonna give it a quick taste here. We're checking our seasoning and our acidity. Mm. So good. Just gonna finish plating this up. Add a little bit more fresh cilantro on top. And then serve it with a nice little lime wedge because some customers will want a little bit more acidity with it. And there you have it, a beautiful sampling of fresh guacamole. Enjoy.